All right, everyone, we're back for part two of the card reveal. We have the second batch ready, and let's get right into it. All right, first one on our list is Kelthus Sunstrider. Six mana, four, seven. Every third spell you cast each turn costs zero. What a good card. So if you are in a very spell-heavy deck and you have a lot of cheap spells, the third spell could be free, or you could build it up to where... You use like a 1 mana spell, 0 mana spell, then boom, you can hit your 10 mana spell. Very situational, and sadly, I don't think I'm going to see plenty of Kelthus this expansion cycle. Maybe in a meme deck, but sadly, I won't see him in main content. Unless somehow they slip him into like a druid deck and like cheese out a high cost spell. But we'll see, you know it will happen. And we have the Warglaze of Azanoth, a 5 mana, 3 attack, 4 durability weapon. Or, as I see it, a 6 mana, 4 attack, 4 durability, do 4 damage to 4 minions kind of weapon. What a great board clear. You can use it with the Demon Hunter and his other abilities to clear 4 mid-level targets. Use it to repeatedly hit a big target. There's so many different ways you could use this, and it's a very adaptable, very aggressive card, and a very welcome addition to the new Demon Hunter class. And now we have Ambush, a new rogue secret that costs 2 mana. Secret, after your opponent plays a minion, summon a 2-3 Ambusher with Poisonous. So, it's pretty much a reskin of that Cobra card that Hunters have, but now rogues get a chance at it. Rogues haven't had any new secrets in a while, so I guess it's a fair trade, but pretty much it's just a reskin of an older card with a new uh, coat of paint. Next. Now we have the Furious Felfin, a 2 mana, 3 attack, 2 health minion. Battle cry if your hero attacked this turn, gain plus 1 attack and rush. So in essence, if you play this on, say, turn 3, hero power, ping, and then this will be a 4-2, so kind of similar to the Galancrond card, except you don't get the Galancrond effect. Add a little bit of a discount, you get it turn 3 instead of turn 4. So, a very interesting card, early board removal. So, very welcome addition, considering how aggressive Demon Hunter is. So, I see it more of as a board removal card. Up next we have Scavenger's Ingenuity. Two mana, draw a beast, give it 3-3. Three, three. Oh, the shenanigans that are going to be born from this. Targeting certain specific beast minions that you want to bring to your deck and limiting your other options just to get a big chunky 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, this is definitely going to be used and abused this cycle and cause havoc and wrecking on wild. Most definitely. If there was a 4-star card in my list, this would be a 4-star card. Alright, now we have the Shaman card. Lady Vash, 3 mana, 4 attack, 3 health. Death Rattle summons a Vash Prime into your deck. Spell damage plus 1. And the Vash Prime is a 7 mana, 5 attack, 4 health. Battle Cry, draw 3 spells, reduce their cost by 3 plus one spell damage. Now this is very, very good for setting up lethal combos with damaging spell effects, because if you can stack the spell damage and get all three for free, you can go boom, 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 and done a, do a ton of damage in one round. So this could be used in a new version of Shaman OTK. We'll have to see, but uh, that seems to be in the cards. All right, now we have Imprisoned Seder. Dormant for two turns. When this awakens, reduce the cost of a random minion in your hand by five. So a three mana, three, three. You play him, you wait two turns, and then boom, he starts reducing cards in your hand by five. So mm, he does one minion by five. I mean, if you had a one particular minion to do a dramatic play, that would be interesting, but you might have multiple minions at the time, depending on when this goes off, and you don't really know what you're going to draw in two turns. 
So this could be going off and reducing a 3 cost to a 0 cost, but uh, I don't see the same much play because it's just too random, too much upkeep. Yeah, this won't be used. And last, but certainly not least, the Bulwark of Azanoth itself. The 3 mana, 1 attack, 4 durability, legendary warrior weapon. Whenever your hero takes damage, this card loses one durability instead. So, three mana, you get four attacks blocked. So, no damage. Early game, it could be kind of a waste since you'll be taking very little hits, but if you bring this out in the late game, you can block some very damaging blows. You can almost use this like a Fusuedo Ice Block in certain scenarios if you have good board control. So, this is going to be very interesting, especially with durability buffing cards like upgrade but overall I definitely will see this in play and if I can't get it I will be crafting this to put into my warrior deck as well all right this has been part two of the ashes of outland card review if you like what you see here please leave me a like and subscribe and wait for the more content to come out I'll be waiting a few days for more cards to come out that way we can do some in-depth reviews and this is Tara from Terra Gaming and see you on the flip side. Later.